Good morning, church. Good morning to all also who have joined online. Uh, we got a good crowd this morning here and a good crowd joining us over the internet. So it's great to be uh, worshiping together and beginning uh, our time in God's presence on this very, very holy day. Today is Monday, Thursday. Um, the name that, that uh, the church has given to this day comes from what the Lord taught us on this day, a new commandment, a new commandment, a mandatum novum. And uh, from that name, uh, the new commandment, mandatum novum, we get the name Monday, Thursday. Uh, last Sunday, I talked about how it's not a new suggestion. It's not a new philosophy. It's not new advice. It is a new commandment. Our Lord uh, leads us and he commands us uh, to learn to love as he has loved us and to find new life in living that love. Uh, uh, we have a Monday, Thursday service this evening, a joint service with uh, First Presbyterian Church just right down the road here on Church Row in Emily is going to be preaching at that service tonight. We'll be uh, doing that service, officiating that service together with the Presbyterians. And uh, tomorrow uh, we'll have our last Holy Week service uh, with a, a Pastor uh, Vince Smith of the First Baptist Church coming to join with us. And the evening service will be in the Wesley Center, a service of darkness. How many of y'all have been to the Tenebrae service, the service of darkness? Uh, it's an extremely powerful service, and it allows us to sort of experience the death of our Lord, to feel uh, the power of what he has done for us, and to grieve with him, uh, the one who has loved us first, and we have learned to love as he uh, gives his life for us and for the salvation of the world. And so that'll be at 6 o'clock in, um, in the Wesley Center. Easter is at 9 a.m. Bring a friend. We'll be here in the sanctuary. We are taking communion. It's the first of the month. And our worship team and uh, our executive team have been working very hard to figure out a way to take communion safely. And I think we've got it. I think we've got it. So uh, that'll be a blessed time. We haven't had a Sunday morning church-wide communion for over a year. We have fasted the Lord's Supper for a year, and that has been really, really hard on me because I like to take communion as often as possible, several times a week if I can, and uh, we haven't had that opportunity. So, so uh, this Sunday is going to be Easter. It's going to be a glorious, glorious Easter in many, many ways. We'll experience a new beginning, a new life, and so make sure to bring Bring a, 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 a pew full. Bring a pew full. And let's pack the house with the alleluias of Easter. Well, let's begin our morning together by singing. One of my very, very favorite, favorite Monday, Thursday songs is Yezu, Yezu. It's number 432. It may be a little bit unfamiliar to you, but uh, allow the words and the song to get into your soul, and it will touch you deeply. Let's stand as we sing together number 432, Yezu, Yezu.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord God, you sent your Son into this world, and before his hour had come, he had washed his disciples' feet. You had given all things into his hands. He had come from you and was going to you. And he knelt down on the floor and washed his friends' feet. He was their teacher and their Lord, yet he washed their feet. Lord God, help us to learn from his example. Help us to do as he has done for us. The world will know we are his disciples if we love one another. Strengthen our hands and our wills for love and for service. Keep before our eyes the image of your Son, who, being God, became a servant for our sake. All glory be to him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. It's great joy to welcome back the Reverend Ron Miser. Uh, we do these Holy Week services every year, and we have a lot of people who come and go. And I introduce a lot of new people to you, but there's, there's one person that we have to have every single year, and that's Ron Miser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, 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 one thing that we have lost in uh, this COVID era and the challenge that we've had over the past few years is that we haven't had your congregation join us. And so for those who are joining online, we miss you. And uh, next year, we expect you to come back because it's not the same without us being together. Uh, I, uh, I could go through the normal things we do for introductions, but we all know each other. We're family with one another. We've been through the fire with one another. Our congregations have locked arms and served this community in ways that we could have never anticipated just a few years ago. Uh, I've been here now five years. You've been here eight years, and we're turning into the old men of the preachers in town uh, and intending to grow old together, aren't we? Yeah. So, so uh, there, we, have a, we have a preacher lunch that meets once a month. We've got a few retired pastors who come, you know, the grandpas of the preacher uh, team in our community, and they come in and weigh in on what they're doing while they're not working anymore. And so one day that's going to be us, right? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that day. Not too soon. Not too soon. But uh, uh, Reverend Miser is... A great, great preacher and a, a great uh, teacher of God's word. And so we shall be blessed today on this very, very holy day, Holy Thursday. Reverend Miser, come and share with us God's word and prepare us uh, for this day of service and remembering our Lord who has taught us to love in word and in deed. Good morning. It is a joy to stand before you for the eighth time. Uh, I go, go back as far as Bill Elwell. And uh, during that time, we were having the service in the center. And um, I thank God for the friendship that our churches have together. And my cheerleaders are not here. Y'all know who I'm talking about. But I bring you greetings from the exciting St. James AME Church. And they're looking forward to being here with you. They, they wanted to know what was the call-in number. <laughs> but there was no call-in number. But wherever you are this morning, good morning, St. James. And on yesterday, uh, Brother Nolan, my mother was on. And um, she, uh, when... Uh, when um, Nathan was talking about the Razorbacks. She says, I'm on from Little Rock. And so I informed him this morning that my mother was on this morning. But once again, I thank you for from the bottom of my heart. Many of you are my friends, and we have worked together in the community. And so for that, I say thank you. From the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter, verses 14 through 16. I 
will be reading from the Message Contemporary Translation. And the reason this fashion, when it was time, he sat down, all the apostles with him, and he said, you've no idea how much I have looked forward to eating this Passover meal with you before I enter my time of suffering. It's the last one I will eat with you until we all, say we all. We all. I got y'all that time. We all eat it together in the kingdom of God. It was interesting this morning in terms of the music selection and in terms of the prayer because what I need you to do right now is turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you have a seat at the table. You have a seat at the table. Mounted Thursday is part of the Christian celebration of Easter. It falls on the Thursday before Easter. It marks the night of the Last Supper, the Holy Communion, or the Eucharist, as described by the Synoptic Gospels. Jesus commanded the people should love one another. And he then washed the feet of his disciple as an act of love. My friends, today is Maori Thursday, 2021. I come to share with you three key ideas as to the importance of the Holy Communion so that everyone, everyone will know that you have a seat at the table. First, the communion helps us see ourselves. We come because of Jesus, but we come as forgiven people who are nourished and renewed as we celebrate our humanity in Jesus, who fed us, who freed us from ourselves. We come not as perfect people, but as forgiven people. Here we come in celebration of those who make mistakes, stray from the straight and narrow, foul up relationships, offend, step on toes, and have blown the whole thing. We come in celebration as we live in our brokenness our low self-esteem, our questions, our feelings of unfairness with life. We come not as people who have control of life, but as people who have lost control and have surrendered ourselves to Jesus. We come as people who are sorry for our misdoings and are tired of running our lives by ourselves. We come as people who are celebrating the grace of God through the body and blood of Christ. Second, the communion helps us to see Jesus. Jesus' love is present here at this supper. He assures us that this is my body, this is my blood. He brings himself as a sign of God's gracious love for each of us. As we leave communion, we leave with a bit of Jesus in our bodies, our hearts, and our souls. When we leave, we continue our faith walk with a reminder of God's grace, God's love, and the peace of Jesus inside of us as we go about our daily walk as a sign of God's presence in our lives in the form of the bread and wine and body and blood. Thirdly, 
Communion helps us see our connection with one another. Food has always been a way of bringing people together for sharing or discussing, of learning about one another. So here at communion, there should be a sense of that community. We should love one another. Jesus is that kind of friend who loved us. I ask you, can you be too? Jesus and others are all present here in each of us. As we come to eat and drink, to partake of bread and wine, body and blood, my friends, everybody, everybody has a seat at the table. And the people of God said, Amen. Thank you. What a day. What a day. Um, and what a way to begin the day. It's great to be together. And, uh, and thank you all for, for coming out to celebrate with the Lord. And remember that on this night, there were so many people who fell asleep. There's so many people who ran away. But on this night, um, our Lord had his disciples who stayed. And so thank you for being here. Uh, let us close our time together with prayer. Gracious God, we thank you that we do have a seat at the table. We thank you, Father, that you have loved us with an eternal love. We thank you, Father, that you have washed our feet, and you who are Lord have taught us the image of servanthood. And so, Father, we pray this day that we would feel ourselves bathed in that love and to offer that love and to learn what greatness means in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Blake, will you bless us as we go? <clears throat> Receive this benediction. As you leave today, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God be with you all. And as you leave, may you share the good news that you have heard today with one another. May you go in peace. <laughs>